More than a year after HBO's Westworld ended its sophomore season, creators Jonathan Nolan and Lisa Joy are finally taking the show to a place fans have been waiting to see since the beginning, the real world. Although Nolan has hinted that season 3 will be, quote, less of a guessing game, that doesn't mean the show will be any less filled with intriguing Easter eggs for sharp-eyed fans. Obviously, spoilers for all Westworld abound. Westworld takes great care with its use of language. Character names often carry a deeper meaning. While Teddy Flood and Hesker Eschaton's surnames have ties to the end of the world, while Ford and Bernard are names that both appear in Aldous Huxley's dystopian novel Brave New World, Ford being Henry Ford and in the novel Another Word for God, while Bernard is an alpha male resentful of his inability to fit into society. Likewise, episode titles often point to something deeper, like season 1's Contrapasso, which is a reference to the punishment of souls in Dante's Inferno. Westworld's third season puts another biblical reference front and center in the premiere episode titled Parche Domine. It's a Roman Catholic antiphon or chant, and it comes from the book of Joel. Translation reads, Spare, Lord, spare your people, lest you be angry with us forever. It's commonly heard during the Lent season, the time in which Christians fast and forego physical pleasures as a means of recognizing Christ's 40-day journey into the desert. For Westworld, the significance is twofold. It could be representative of Dolores' long journey into the real world, as she has already set herself up as the host savior. It's also a call to be spared from a holy wrath, to be granted mercy, something Dolores likely won't deliver. After all, the real gods are coming. And they're very angry. When we first meet Caleb, it's as he wakes up to begin his day. Much of what we see of Caleb is routine. He goes through the motions of his life, almost as if he's on a loop. It doesn't take much to recognize the similarities between Caleb and the host Maeve we met in Season 1. Just as Maeve did in Westworld's first season, it's a pretty safe bet that Caleb will wind up waking up from his reality in the coming weeks. Do you need some help? But Caleb isn't the only Westworld character following a familiar path. By the end of the episode, Dolores has successfully replaced Martin Connells, the head of security for Insight, with a host under her control. Insight, of course, is the data company that controls the system, a thing Dolores would very much like access to. So now Dolores has a host posing as a high-ranking Delos board member, along with one who works high-level security. If we buy into the theory that Stubbs was an undercover host within the Westworld theme park, then it's looking like Dolores is working her own Ford magic in the real world, with her own Arnold Bernard and Stubbs stand-ins. What's become of Bernard since he made his way back to the real world and had that ominous first meeting with Dolores? Turns out he isn't doing so well. Having gone into hiding following the Westworld massacre, Bernard has been spending the last few months living and working on a meat farm. The slaughtering of animals is work he has some trouble with, but he makes do at least until he's confronted by a couple of co-workers and is forced to switch personalities in order to handle the situation. Bernard, it seems, is able to switch between personalities at the touch of a button. Or, more accurately, he can alternate between his character and analysis modes, which have evolved into distinct personalities. It looks like much of his arc this season will be in trying to put himself back together. And if you need hard evidence, you don't have to look any further than the name he's using as an alias. It's an anagram for Damaged Arnold. While it isn't necessarily a Grand Theft Auto Easter egg, Rico, the app Caleb uses to make money in his downtime, does certainly feel like a nod to the famous video game. With tons of quick buck options and messages like, you made bank, now get drank, it definitely evokes a GTA vibe. This wouldn't be the first time the series has been compared to the game, either. During its first season, Deadline likened Westworld to being, quote, more Grand Theft Auto than the Emmy-winning Game of Thrones. In fact, Jonathan Nolan even cited the game as a reference at the 2016 New York Comic Con, saying, We played some as research for making the show, as when Michael Crichton first wrote his movie, video games literally didn't exist except for Pong. I'm happy to report my wife is the world's most boring Grand Theft Auto player. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite shows are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.